adverse possession as you're working on passing the national real estate exam, this is a definition that we're going to review. It falls under the topic of property ownership for those of you exposed to PSI exams, which is about 20 plus states. Property ownership offers eight questions out of 80. Towards the end of this video, we're going to go through the breakdown so that you are aware of what you need to review to pass that part of the exam. So property ownership is one out of the 11 topics. You might have heard the definition of bundle of legal rights. This is the one that goes through when you own property, what it is that comes along with those rights, leading us to this term, estate in land. Estate in land is going to go through how much of the property do you own? Are there any limitations that are attached to the property? For example, deed restrictions. How long do you have access to this property in terms of your rights? It is broken down into two, freehold or leasehold. Freehold is indeterminable, meaning it goes on until who knows? Is it based on someone's life under life estate? Or is it fee simple where it goes on until something happens, but it goes on, essentially could go on forever. And we'll go through that. The other type of estate in land is leaseholds. These ones have a definite expiration date whether it's under estate for years, periodic tenancy, estate at will, or estate at sufferance. There's a video you can check out that goes through that particular topic. Click on the link above for you to access it. The bundle of legal rights offer me the opportunity to dispose of the property. That right is broken down into two ways that I can transfer the property voluntary alienation or involuntary alienation. What are the differences? We're going to review each one of them, starting off with voluntary alienation. Voluntary alienation, just like the word sounds and the image for those of you who are watching, this one is by choice. You made the choice as to how the property is going to transfer. So during your lifetime, you are going to decide how you're going to dispose of the property along with the rights that came along with it. How do you do this? You're either going to give it as a gift to someone or you're going to sell it. This is accomplished through a deed. Or ahead of time, you are deciding when your time comes about, when you're no longer with us, who will be owning that property. So you set up a will and in that will, the device is known as a property and you will elect the devisee, the person who is going to get the property when you're no longer with us. That is under the topic of voluntary alienation how you're disposing of the property by choice. This is done through a deed. For some of us, let's review what is a deed. A deed, simply put, is a piece of paper that is used to transfer the property and the rights along with it. The primary purpose of the deed is to transfer the ownership rights. Sometimes you don't have a choice in terms of how the property ownership and the rights are going to be transferred. This is now when we get to the other side, which is known as involuntary alienation. The couple of ways how this might happen through descent, a sheet, eminent domain, foreclosure, or adverse possession. 
This again is without your consent or control. Let's go through each one. Let's start with transfer by descent. What does that mean? This is where, unfortunately, you do not have a will. So then if it was sudden, you didn't have a will already in place, you died intestate, that is the other word, definition for you died without a will. So the ownership of that property and the rights are going to go to their heirs, where heirs are again, individuals who are related to you, whether it's your spouse, your parents, your grandparents, your children, and so forth. Those would be the heirs. Again, they get in the property because you did not have a will. Transfer by a sheet. Some of you might pronounce that as a cheat. You've been cheated out of it, kind of, in terms of reminding you how to remember the definition. How this comes about is you do not have a will in place. Unfortunately, you've passed away. It's a governmental power. How? Since you did not have a will, you died in test state, and they have checked around. There are no heirs to receive this property, so then the government will take the property. Again, there are no heirs. That's how the property is going to be transferred to the government. The third one, transfer by eminent domain. Again, remember, you don't have control of this one. Another governmental power. And here's where it is going to go through the process known as condemnation. If I pause here a little bit, there's another video that we review, governmental powers. Some of you might know this with the acronym of PEAT, police power, which is going through zoning, building codes. The E is for eminent domain. Again, the government is taking over the property for public use. Taxation, they're collecting money from you in order to run the jurisdiction, state, and then a sheet we just covered. They get in the property because you do not have any heirs and you passed away without a will. Fourth one, I believe, is going to be through foreclosure. Yes, some of you would say this is under your control because how this one is working is you did not make your payment and per the contract that you have between you and the lender states that you need to pay them back, you used the house as collateral to borrow money from them, the bank. So here's where the mortgagee, the lender, is reclaiming the property because you used it as collateral and that is foreclosure. That is under involuntary alienation. Adverse possession. This is where the video is focusing on, right? So adverse possession is to do with how long the person has been using the property. It has to be notorious, it has to be continuous, and it has to be hostile. We pause here to remind you that we have resources available that will lead towards the success of you passing the real estate exam. We have the platform known as PRESS, Pass Real Estate in Simple Steps, that goes through the national content. We also have a Maryland Real Estate Exam Study Guide that will focus on the Maryland part of the exam. Visit our website, Training with Brenda. So let's go through how sticky adverse possession really is. Once you learn about it in class, yes, you might feel a little bit bitter about it. And here's why. How is this one sticky? Because you could avoid it. How adverse possession comes about. It usually starts with encroachment. Visualize that you look out, your neighbor is mapping out, that they're going to be putting up a fence. 
or they've been telling you that they're probably going to start a vegetable garden or are they going to put up a pool, a driveway, a garage, a shed? So now you've had this discussion with your neighbor. It sounds interesting and you don't know any better. They go ahead and they put up, let's stick with a fence. None of you figured out what your boundary lines are. For you, it is not really preventing you from getting to your house. And so it starts off as an encroachment. Let's assume now a couple years have passed by and your neighbor now sells their house. The buyer is going to do a survey and lo and behold, you find out that that fence is on your side. So it's an encroachment. It's illegally over on your side, whatever it may be, three feet, five feet, 10 feet, I'm making up numbers. So that's an encroachment. It starts off, the fence is there, and it's encroaching over on your side. It then becomes an easement by prescription. Now here, prescription, I usually say in class, picture the worst tasting medicine ever, whatever that is, because when people hear prescription, they think of medicine. It has been prescribed by a doctor. Here's why you're thinking about the worst tasting medicine ever is because if that fence has been there for X amount of years, my state, Maryland, 20 years, then now we switch over to, you guessed it, adverse possession. How does that come about? This is where your new neighbor can claim the space that they encroached and remember it's not them it's based on how long this thing the fence the garage the shed the driveway the pool has been in existence if we can show that it has been there in maryland for 20 years it's an easement by prescription why it's notorious you didn't really give them permission you were just talking with your previous neighbor. Uh, it doesn't really affect you in terms of you accessing your property. It's definitely hostile. It's open. We can see it. But since it has been there for 20 years, now your new neighbor can claim that space. You remember that three feet, five feet, 10 feet I was throwing earlier? They can claim it and how they claim it and get it will be the process of adverse possession. Yes, that is painful. So that is the definition of adverse possession is where, again, it started off as an encroachment. We really didn't say anything, probably because we didn't really know. And then it has been there for X amount of years. The last process is adverse possession. This topic of adverse possession is found under a specific topic. The PSI exam has 11 topics. One of them is property ownership. You've made it this far, and here's a gift to you. The breakdown of the questions. The topic is under property ownership. Eight questions on the salesperson exam and also on the broker exam because they're 80 questions. So you'll get at least eight questions on the exam under this topic of property ownership, PSI exams. Real versus personal property, land characteristics and legal descriptions. Check out my video that goes through legal descriptions. We then have encumbrances and effects on property ownership. Today I covered number four, potential encumbrances on titles such as probate leases or, there you go, adverse possession. The topic goes on to cover types of ownership. You need to have a clear understanding on majority of this. What is ownership in severalty, timeshares, 
in terms of tenants in common, joint tenancy. I'm sure you can find a video on that topic here on our channel. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely do so. Like the content, let us know in the comment what else we can offer you in terms of assistance. It shows up also in land use. This one doesn't have that many questions. 5% out of 80 is four. So it talks about governmental rights to impose taxes and special assessment, how they acquire property through eminent domain, the process of condemnation and a sheet. I covered that for you today. And then these are the other things that are covered in that topic, private controls in terms of deed restrictions and so forth. We thank you so much for listening through the video. Subscribe, like, and definitely check out the other videos that we have on our channel. Share with others. Pass the Maryland Real Estate Exam.